Now we're going to graph this inequality on the coordinate plane. Notice two variables, so of course it's going to be on the plane, and we're going to say x and y there. And, um, well, let's get started. First thing we do is we graph the boundary line. The boundary line simply, I'm going to replace the inequality mark with an equal sign. y is equal to x minus 2. And you recognize that as a slope-intercept form of the line. So let's get graphing. Uh, you probably, by now you spent a lot of time on this. We start right here at the y-intercept, 0, 2. We can see the slope is 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, all that. Oh, we've been doing this forever. Or down 1, back 1, down 1, back 1, up, oh, there I go. We connect this with a straight edge, and there you have it. This is going to be my boundary line. It's here, here, extending infinitely across this plane. So now that boundary line is going to divide the plane into two pieces. Well, you're either on this side, you're above it or you're below it. And we've got to figure out which side to shade. Now that should be pretty straightforward. Let's, let's just start picking a test point. Now a test point, you can't pick something that's right on the line. Don't pick these points. You've got to pick a point that's on one side or the other. Now, you're in luck here because our very favorite test point, zero, oh, not right there, zero, zero, the origin. Well, anything with a zero has easy arithmetic, so it's a great choice. So let's grab that one, my favorite of the test points, because, well, I like the easy way. I'm going to take that zero, zero, and I'm going to substitute it into this very first, our original inequality. And there you go. So I end up with a statement that says zero is less than or equal to negative two. I guess we're going to have to evaluate that. And uh, interpreting that, I say, that's not true. Not wrong. This is not part of the solution. I must be on the wrong side. Perhaps I should be shading the other side. But not so fast. Let's take our time here and let's pick another test point. Now, um, again, I could, I could pick a point here. I, I could pick points anywhere. But I like the ones with zero because they're easy. So I'll pick this one, which is certainly on the opposite side from the origin. I'll call that point five zero. So there you go, that's my chosen point. Again, back to this inequality. And let's do the substitution. And there it is. Remember, the five is the x, the zero is the y. Zero is less than or equal to three. Hmm, well, I would have to say that that is true. Therefore, this point is a solution and this must be the side that contains the solutions. So let's shade the figure. It would look like this. Now that means that any point, if I were to draw some random point, and I'm going to, no matter where it is, anywhere in here, in the shaded region, including on the boundary line, because the inequality is less than or equal to, Anything here is a satisfactory solution. So let's just test, let's just pick another point um, just to test and show how this is true. Um, I'm going to take this, take a point over here, positive, uh, I like the uh, first quadrant so I don't make any mistakes. Let's take 10, 2. Let's see how that works. So I'll take that point and then I'll substitute again into my very original inequality. Remember the 10 is the x, the 2 is the y, and when I simplify this, I get again a very true statement because 10, 2 is a solution 
as we would expect. So all the values in this shaded region, this side and including the boundary line, are all solutions to this inequality.